Um, I feel greatly honored to attend this great event today, along with my sister, uh, Madam Pohamba from Namibia. I would like to thank the organizers, more especially my friend, Master um, Dyson, and Women's, Women's Global Initiative um, as a partner of today's event. Allow me to congratulate Wendy Diamond, founder of the Women's Entrepreneurship Day, the advisory board, partners, and sponsors of this great event. There are many challenges that women face and they continue to face in doing their businesses. Um, I would want to say a little bit about Malawi. Um, in Malawi, women are doing businesses. In Malawi, 52% of the population is about women and girls. The 52% of the women, some of them, they are doing businesses, but they're small scale and medium size businesses. In Malawi, the women, the business women, they have their own challenges. The first challenge is women lack collateral to en en enable them to borrow money from the banks because they're doing small scale businesses. And sometimes gender is used to sideline the women to get maybe a big chunk of money from the, from the bank. The second challenge is about lack of tra training. The women in Malawi would want to go into big uh, businesses but because they are not trained, they don't have the training, they are not confident to do big things. Lack of skills reduces the women's enthusiasm and their own capacity and make them fail to participate in lucrative businesses. The third challenge is gender equality and empowerment. In Malawi, girls and women are faced with a hostile environment in which most social economic activities are dominated by men. These men sometimes they create deliberate barriers to scare off women. Women, in most cases, they are restricted to domestic chores and tedious subsistence farming. As First Lady of Malawi, currently what I'm doing, I've established a trust to assist the women. This trust is about beautifying my country managing the waste in my country. Because I know that the women are doing small scale businesses, they are contributing to the e economy of the country. But if we do not manage our waste, these women will spend their time in hospitals nursing the sick children. Because the waste is a breeding place for malaria and other diseases. So I want to assist the women to go about their businesses in a conducive environment, a healthy environment, as they develop the economy of Malawi. And in the waste management, I would want to empower the girls and the women as we do the recycling part of the waste management. I strongly believe that through the trust, women can be empowered to establish businesses and develop cross-border trade to uplift their well-being. My role as First Lady is to motivate the women 
entrepreneurs and support a conducive environment for women in business. Because I know when the women are empowered, when the women have uh, economically empowered, they will be able to get their children to school, they will be able to make informed choices, they will be able to, uh, to say no to abuse, to say no to gender violence. But if they are not economically empowered, then there will be gender um, abuse in our country. So, uh, in Malawi, women are doing small-scale businesses. They have challenges, but they are rising up. We are going forward, and one day, I'm sure some women will come from Malawi to testify of whatever businesses they are doing in Malawi. Thank you very much. Thank you. You know, you described Malawi, but I would say the, the very issues you raised, training, gender discrimination, apply in almost every country. So it's a great opportunity for us to learn from what you're doing in Malawi, and particularly with the Beautify Malawi Trust. Congratulations on that excellent work. Madam Puhamba, First Lady from Zambia. Thank you. Um, I think I have to, re to read my statement because really I am not fluent in English and uh, I'm, I'm begging your pardon that you have to listen carefully because this person who is here is not really fluent in English and she's trying her best. Thank you. On the onset, allow me to extend my warm and sincere appreciation to Marcia Dyson, founder of Women's Global Initiative, an active partner of Women's Entrepreneurship Day, for extending an invitation to me to participate in today's great and historic event. I would also like to congratulate Wendy Diamonds, the founder of the Women's Entrepreneurs Day, the advisory board, partners, and sponsors who made it possible to have such a successful event today. I would further like to, to greatly welcome the organizers' initiatives for deciding upon this important and timely topic. And I quote, government's role in empowering girls and the women entrepreneurs, which I am gladly participating as a, panel, as a panelist. <laughs> empowering women and girls serves as one of the catalysts for economic development and the achievement of gender equality. There is no way we could talk about uh, or rather achieve economic development if one component of our society, which is women and girls, is not empowered and they're given an opportunity to participate in productive activities at equal pace and space with the rest. Women empowerment can be defined as the ability of women to access essential component and development, such as health, education, employment, employment opportunities, technology transfer, access to land, access to market and, the, and the finance, and the political participation to mention but a few. In this regard, it is imperative of governments to develop targeted programs aimed at empowering women and girls in order to improve their own life situations and enhance their potential for sustainable development, poverty alleviation. 
allow me to share with you a few things that my country has put in place in an, if, in an effort to empower women and girls entrepreneurs. In Namibia, empowerment of women and girls is a constitutional right. In striving to implement the constitutional provision, the government developed a policy framework centering on economic empowerment for all. The framework aims at enhancing entrepreneurship among previously disadvantaged persons and concentrate on assisting women, youth, and persons with a disability. At independence, the government abolished all the discriminatory laws, including those against the women, including those in, uh, uh, against the women. Minister of Gender Equality and Child Welfare was created and entrusted with the uh, responsibility of addressing, addressing the needs of... Um, wow. of, uh, of women and the taking care of the welfare of children. The ministry developed a national gender policy which highlights the modalities to achieve the empowerment of women through various avenues, including access and control of productive re resources and access to services such as land, credit, markets, employment and training in various fields. We cannot talk about and achieve empowerment of women and girls without investing of providing them with quality education. Education does not only serve as an entry point for women to, to other development opportunities, but the education achievement of women have greater effects within the family and across the generations. Investing in, the girl, in girls' education is one of the most effective ways to reduce poverty and ultimately break the cycle of, of poverty. Recognizing the significant impact of education, the government of Namibia declared the primary education for all children and secondary education will be free as of 2015. This will allow Namibian children, especially girls, to have access to education and gain relevant skills, which will open doors for them to ultimately enter the labor market. Educated women and girls are proven to understand the need to access quality health care services and they have the right to decide on the number of children they want to have and also to decide on their spacing. Having a good health system which is accessible and qualitative, and qualitative reduces cases of maternal mortality and morbidity. In Namibia, the Affirmative Action Act of 1998 serves as a means to enhance the recruitment of women in management positions and increases their representation and the participation in decision-making processes. I am proud to announce that as of next year, 2015, Parliament representation will be allocated to a 50-50 ratio. I am also proud to announce that three of the main parastatal in Namibia are headed by women. <laughs> With regards to access to finance and funding, the government has established a small and medium enterprises bank and allocates a huge amount of money to ensure that it is fully operational. During 2013, the Development Bank of Namibia approved loans 
to entrepreneurs, of which 26% was earmarked for businesses owned by women. A number of ministries also provides grants, loans, and starting up capital, uh, capital income generating activities, and support to small and medium enterprises. When women entrepreneurs are supported to access markets through participation in national and international trade fairs, expos, and ex exhibitions, the government also promotes and supports women entrepreneurs to understand business trips. Excuse me. To understand business trips overseas where they could, uh, they could get opportunities for investment and enter into the partnership with international investors. It is a known fact that empowerment of women is not isolated the responsibility of the government alone. The government collaborates and the part partners with private sector in such an undertaking, especially in areas of provision of funds, skills training, training opportunities, including production skills and the business management skills. Some firms in the private sector have specific programs to invest in women and, uh, entrepreneurs by providing them with loans at a zero interest rate. Beneficiaries are selected by a special committee comprising of personnel from relevant ministries, including the Minister of Gender Equality and Child Welfare. The government also collaborates with the private sector to train women entrepreneurs in the areas of financial management and the other entrepreneurial skills. Challenges. Although the government has good policy frameworks and the programs aimed at empowering women and girls entrepreneurs, there are still gaps and challenges which prevent the women from, from starting a business or inhibiting growth of their businesses. This includes, among others, the shortage of working capital and the collateral security lack of accounting and bookkeeping skills, teenage pregnancy, the difficult the difficult to change the, the traditional role of women in households also plays a great role. In conclusion, I would like to call on the private sectors and the main entrepreneurs to join hands and complement the government's efforts in providing assistance in terms of finance, capacity building, etc., in dealing with the plight of women and girls entrepreneurs to bring the existing gaps. I thank you. So congratulations, Madam Pohamba, for all the good work that's being done in Namibia to ensure that the government is supporting and encouraging women entrepreneurship. Both, both of our first ladies have done such a fantastic job of laying out both the challenges and some solutions. I'm not even going to go to questions because they've answered almost all of them, but I'm going to pick up on three things that I heard both of you say and that I think we might want to just close with in thinking about. The first is... Governments must take a stand and address not only the issues directly related to women entrepreneurs, but the full, the full panoply of infrastructure issues from healthcare to girls' education to ensuring there's equity across the board. So I heard you both say that, and that's very important. Second, we've got to ensure that there is a, a, a path of opportunity that's, that's laid out for women entrepreneurs to be 
to enter at any part of the system and that you've, you've identified some of the techniques for doing that. And third, and maybe most importantly, it takes very visible role models like these two women to stand up and speak out and remind their governments how important it is to address these issues. And so I want to ask you to join me in thanking Her Excellency Matharika and Her Excellency Pohamba for their leadership, their role models in their countries, and their willingness to continue to fight for the rights of women and, women and girls around the world. Thank you both very much.